My name is Lou Amadio, Principal Development Lead for the Azure Edge Robotics team. Um, one question I get asked all the time is, does Microsoft do robotics? And the answer is yes. Yes, we do. Um, in 2015, when the HoloLens originally launched, uh, I had the honor of working on one of the launch demos at our annual developer conference. We built a robot that ran um, Windows. At the time, I was using Cylon.js because Ross didn't run on Windows. We used the HoloLens to actually do command and control and act as the sensor package for that robot, giving allowing you to put waypoints in space and have the robot follow them. It's a cool demo. You can find it on YouTube. In the intervening time frame, we've done a lot of work here. We've brought ROS to Windows. We've also done a lot of work on the HoloLens to make it easy to build HoloLens applications. And our friends over in the mixed reality organization have released the next generation of the HoloLens, which is fantastic. Much more performance than the original, as well as a much, much wider field of view. They also have a, a developer experience that leverages game engines for building applications for the HoloLens. And on top of those, they have the, the mixed reality toolkit. Okay, so we'll talk about what the mixed reality toolkit is, why it's interesting, and what we're doing with ROS2 and the mixed reality toolkit. Okay, so I wanted to first take a brief moment to talk about the Azure Edge robotics team within, within the Azure Edge and platform organization. We are a product group uh, prior to uh, being organized into the Azure Edge and platform team. Uh, we were part of the Windows IoT group. Windows IoT ha has two major distributions, uh, Windows IoT Core and Windows IoT Enterprise, which is targeted for embedded scenarios uh, such as robotics. Our team is currently responsible for quite a few ROS nodes for Azure and Windows, uh, both on Linux and Windows, as well as Robo, what we call uh, Azure RoboOps, which is DevOps for robotics, uh, a Visual Studio Code ROS extension, uh, which uh, you should take a look at. We, it's it's quite you know, quite I think it's quite awesome, uh, supporting both ROS one and ROS two development, launch file debugging, uh, URDF processing, and some utilities for uh, working with ROS, uh, and that works on Windows and Linux as well. I mentioned ROS on Windows. It's one of the things that uh, consumes, uh, has traditionally consumed quite a bit of my team. It's been a nice, uh, in, in, we continue to maintain four distributions. So we have uh, Melodic, Noetic, and then we also do um, Foxy, and we're working on rolling builds uh, and setting up for Galactic here soon. Uh, and we've had quite a few installs for uh, ROS on Windows uh, worldwide. As far as the ROS nodes go, we do have a ROS node for uh, that would leverages the Onyx runtime, which is a cross-platform vendor-neutral way of representing um, ML models. Allows you to subscribe to camera data and output uh, poses or uh, bounding boxes for inferencing. We do have a Windows camera ROS node, which does secure RTSP output, so you can do uh, teleoperation on Windows. Uh, language understanding, which is allows you to do command and control with voice, and uh, that's a cross-platform as well. The Azure Connect, which is uh, uh, a, a evolution of the the Xbox Connect, specifically targeted for uh, developer scenarios, uh, with a industrial version coming out uh, through partners uh, in the near future. And we also do uh, Azure connectivity through IoT Hub. So uh, this is Azure Edge Robotics and the Azure Edge and Platform team. You can feel free to take a look at our landing page at aka.ms forward slash ROS. Okay, so now let's switch topics, switch back to the original topic, which is what is the, the, the mixed reality toolkit in ROS? When building a holographic application, you can build games with it, but building real user interfaces and user uh, real interactivity is actually still quite difficult uh, for augmented reality headsets. I've often said that the HoloLens is like a robot that doesn't have wheels. It does all of the similar things that a robot does. It needs to localize in itself in space. It needs to understand space. It needs to solve for things like what is the ground and what is a wall and what is a desk and what is a door. 
um, but it also needs to actually project images into the user's view that are stable, world lock, and shareable. So it's a pretty cool set of technology that is built for the HoloLens itself. Uh, and allowing that to interact with robots directly is something that uh, I'm personally passionate about. So I did want to switch over to another screen, which actually shows uh, the landing page for the Mixed Reality Toolkit. So um, the toolkit itself provides many UI elements that you can use to build your application from buttons and controls, keyboards and slates, uh, even 3D objects that you can manipulate, go and grab sliders with and um, move around. The, they has quite a few solvers, as I mentioned, like what is a wall? So you can take an object and pin it up to the wall, uh, allowing you to st stick around. We also are doing some work with um, being able to spatially pin objects by using things like QR codes uh, to allow the, an object to expose its orientation in space. And in the near future, uh, we have a, uh, or not near future, it's beta right now, which is object pinning. So you can use an ML model to actually identify an object in space and pin holograms to it. Uh, which is pretty neat, uh, something I haven't really played around. Spatial understanding is actually uh, really critical to holographic stability, meaning that it needs to understand the, its environment. So the HoloLens does include a depth sensor that uses to not only fault in the environment, to all, but also for user, user interaction. One thing you can do really well with the HoloLens is to actually identify the hands in space uh, and use your hands to actually manipulate uh, holographic objects. So the Mixed Reality Toolkit does include a ton of extensions and uh, features for building your application. So it made sense to actually bring ROS and marry these two pieces of infrastructure together. I'm going to pause there for a second. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? Uh, let's see if I can bring up the, nope, okay. So the well, mixed reality- I, I have a question real quick, actually. Sure. Um, do you, does this require a 3D camera or can it work with a regular um, RGB camera? Uh, so the mixed reality toolkit targets um, VR headsets and AR headsets uh, that are currently on the market. Um, it is designed to work in the, in, uh, on physical devices, including in simulation. So if you don't have a HoloLens, you can use the holographic simulator and still leverage the mixed reality toolkit for working with uh, holographic UI. So in terms of like detecting walls and stuff, I guess. Um, that does require the How HoloLens. does that work? Okay. okay. So the, the HoloLens um, has sensors and hardware for actually accelerating uh, inferencing on those kinds of uh, objects. So uh, the solvers actually leverage that feature for or the hardware on the HoloLens for those solvers. Um, it would be an interesting experiment to see if we can actually bring those solvers to robotics so that you don't need to have the HoloLens, um, but that's not something I've delved into uh, ju uh, just yet. All right, thanks. No problem. In order to build a mixed reality toolkit application, uh, there are essentially two different mixed reality toolkits. There's one that targets the Unity game engine, and there's another one that targets the Unreal game engine. There are costs and benefits to each. Um, I, the, they are attempting to make the, the choice between Unity and Unreal uh, as far as the capabilities of the uh, mixed reality toolkit kind of neutral so that you can choose one without uh, cost to the other. Um, but in both cases, they are intended to be developed using the Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio 2019 um, on Windows. So that is uh, something you want to uh, be aware of when targeting the HoloLens. So when it comes to HoloLens and ROS, you kind of have two choices, uh, ROS1 or ROS2. When it comes to ROS1, there's a fantastic extension that already exists called ROS Sharp that allows you to bridge 
the HoloLens with uh, the ROS1 ecosystem. It does this through the ROS bridge, which is a web server that runs uh, and exposes a web socket that the application side connects to um, in order to do pub sub to ROS. Works great, love it, go use that one if you're targeting ROS1. When we were looking at uh, ROS2, we, we support ROS2 on Windows uh, and HoloLens runs Windows. So what does it mean to bring Hol uh, ROS2 to the HoloLens? Uh, so we've been working with uh, the open source project uh, ROS2.net, which is built uh, by Estev, and I'm, I'm blanking on his last name, sorry about that. Uh, but it was actually started during early ROS2 development and is continuing to be uh, invested in by community vendors as well as Microsoft. It, it does a direct translation from DDS messages to ROS2 messages in C Sharp, allowing you to write at your application in C Sharp directly in Unity uh, and do pub sub directly from a ROS2 graph into the Unity runtime. We've also, and I'll show a picture of this, but we've also been working on making ROS2 available as a UWP native application. It's one of the, the ways uh, the HoloLens is a uh, Windows application, or sorry, Windows hardware uh, that runs a smaller version of Windows called Windows Core OS. Um, and it does require UWP applications uh, in order to target, target it. So in order for ROS2 to work with a HoloLens, it actually needs to be a UWP native. Um, we are also looking at what does it take to support ROS2 uh, with the Mixed Reality Toolkit for Unreal. Uh, which can be uh, has different a different back mix of function uh, features that you can leverage uh, and different licensing models as well. So as far as the software stack is concerned, we have two, uh, two pieces: things that run on the robot and things that run on the Hololens. As far as things that run on the robot, standard ROS two exposed to the application using standard ROS2 uh, multi-headed uh, multi uh, solution. Uh, but our friends in the mixed reality organization have also attempted to, or have also lit up Azure Spatial Anchors for ROS. This allows you to use a cloud service to actually pin objects in space that the robot knows about including where it is relative to uh, something that the HoloLens can find. Another way of doing this, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is actually pinning raw space and holographic space together using a QR code. And we'll talk about that in a second. So now let's focus on what's going on in the HoloLens. At the very lowest level, um, we are enabling ROS2 inside of UWP native. So um, the minimum set of ROS2 features that can run on the HoloLens are being brought up. Uh, and we are working with eProsima on FastDDS for UWP so that you can uh, run this not only on the HoloLens, but other UWP uh, host environments like IoT Core. On top of this, uh, we've invested in uh, some features in ROS2 and we're continuing to invest in ROS2.net, which is .NET Core language bindings for ROS2. This gives you the pub sub uh, and eventually action server features that allow you to use uh, to write code in C Sharp and actually target ROS2. Next level up is the Mixed Reality Toolkit for ROS, which includes not, uh, which pairs next to the Mixed Reality Toolkit, but exposes features that are ROS specific. LiDAR visualization, action server visualization, uh, point cloud, um, uh, and eventually we want to do a move it um, exposure so that we can, you can do command and control, you can reach out and grab a virtual robot and move it around. That's kind of where the, our platform investment for the HoloLens stops. And your application that you build is built on top of that common understanding. So we're taking on of the platform investment for the uh, for Hololens and allowing you to build your application on top, whether you ship that commercially or as an open source project, 
it's up to you. Uh, we will be providing some very basic uh, holographic um, holographic applications for uh, this the stack. Is there any questions? So spatial pinning. The HoloLens has its own concept of what space is. Uh, it uses uh, triangulation of interest points in space. It figures out um, where it is relative to uh, objects that it can see on walls or in the environment. And it will triangulate itself based on that. This means that it is constantly recomputing what its origin is. And in fact, it will recompute its origin about every three meters changing as it goes, which is quite a bit different than how uh, Ross considers space to be, where you have a, a central Ross origin. So what, we're, what we've done is we've started working on a solution that allows you to use a robot's reference in space as the initial starting point for where the HoloLens uh, sees the uh, um, projected objects from the robot. So for example, where is the LIDAR? Well, in order to know where the LIDAR is, the HoloLens needs to know where it is relative to the robot. So during initial bootstrapping, we use a QR code. In the past, we have used April tags, uh, but we use an, a QR code to actually find where that origin is relative to the robot. We use the odometry frame that we've subscribed to in order to find Ross origin and then drop a spatial anchor. And then we use the Ross origin as the translation for where the HoloLens is relative to the robot. So that in the future, any pub sub that you do um, that requires uh, spatial understanding, will, you can use real TF to actually uh, transform from holographic space to robot space and back again. Okay. So at that point, we turn off the QR code subsystem and uh, it's all good. Okay, uh, so some challenges. Uh, HoloLens requires GWP. Uh, it is built on a small subset of Win32. That means that uh, not you can't just take a Win32 application or a Windows application and drop it on the HoloLens. It actually has to be written and compiled specifically to target UWP or the universal Windows platform. It is re really resource constrained. So doing computer vision uh, externally from the hardware uh, can impact the frame rate and performance. Capability constrained, there's, a, there's only so much that you can do on the HoloLens. Uh, it is ARM64, so things have to be compiled for it again. Um, spatial understanding of how the HoloLens works versus the, how the robots work is a challenge and something that we're looking to abstract away from uh, the ROS2 investment. Um, the dev iteration can also be quite large. So if you can do uh, work inside of the Unity environment, uh, it's more it's ideal. So uh, resources we do have this is open source. Uh, we are developing it in the open. We're currently working on migrating uh, to Foxy. We have a NuGet, NuGet package, which is a standard interchange format for Windows for ROS2, which will be published along with the ROS on Windows chocolatey packages. Uh, and we are working on a, a Unity package manager to allow you to just drop, a, drop this into a Unity uh, application and start running with it. Anyway, um, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. This is a personal passion project for me, uh, and I really... Uh, and look forward to what people do with it. Feel free to reach out to me. My uh, uh, alias is on the uh, site. Thank you very much.